guys having you. If you're just joining in, you're watching CMTV and our beautiful show, program, series, Life in Christ. I'm Reverend Betram Ginyu. We have been talking about the perfect prayer in times of trouble. And we talked about praise. We are speaking from Jesus' experience it's from Psalm 50. We're talking about praise. And I said, you, are, you don't need to suffer for nothing. I have refused. As a Christian, as a believer, as a pastor, as a brother, as a husband, as a, as a son, I will never suffer for nothing. I will never let any suffering, any sweat drop for no result. And that's why I'm giving you the perfect prayer in times of trouble. You can pray this prayer before trouble ever comes. Know your advantage. You must know the advantage you have. When you are a son to the king, yes, you may be under the laws of the kingdom, but you have more privilege than every other citizen of that kingdom. You have an advantage with God. And I want to say, if you can understand the dimensions of praising God, there is no situation in your life that's going to bring you depression. You, you, you cannot be depressed. You can't be down and you should never have a dull moment. No excuses. You will arise and shine. And I'm giving you the secret. King David think, thought through these and wrote again in Psalm 37, in verse 7. He said, do not fret yourself because of the man that prospers in his evil way. He said, for do not worry. The evil, shall, the evil one shall soon be cut off. And in verse 5, he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. And in verse 8, he said, don't give in to worry or anger. It only leads to more trouble. You don't, you don't give in to worry or anger. Apostle Paul speaks the same thing when he's writing to the Philippian church in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4. He said, let your moderation be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. Rejoice again, and I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. Let the way you behave, let the way you react, react from true reality. Don't react from reality. Let the way you carry yourself within a trial make the world to know that God is at hand. And then he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. The greatest way to give yourself peace is to count your blessings, name them one by one. You can't make it on your own. The words of your prayer are not enough to sustain your life. It's God's mercy. There are those who are crushed in the midst of prayer. There are those who have prayed all the prayer and there's nothing they have done wrong in their lives. And they are like the disadvantaged ones forever under curse. <laughs> Don't worry yourself. Maintain your relationship with God. There is a story of Lazarus and the rich fool. Or the rich man. Lazarus on earth was very poor. Dogs licking his wound. Cursed. In a charismatic milieu, we'll call them cursed. There's a curse. There's an altar fighting them. <laughs> when they got to heaven, he was seated beside God. I want to tell you, praise positions you. Recognizing God from true reality positions you with him. No king accepts beside him any man that does not recognize the values of the kingdom. No president sends ambassadors who recognize not the values of the kingdom. And do not forget, not Every defender of a nation's integrity is brought to the public. Not every defender of the kingdom of heaven is given a face of prosperity on the earth. A face of enjoyment. But there is a dimension of oppression you carry that the world cannot see. God makes it seem like you are destitute, poor, cursed for life. But you are the secret of some people's survivor. Hallelujah. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I want you to be able to see God and to look at God beyond your suffering. 
refuse, reject to suffer any suffering that is not ordained by God. And how would you know? You would know that your suffering is not ordained by God when you begin to praise him and when you engage thanking him such that there is a provocation of coming deeper into his presence and to understand his dimension and what he wills for you. Imagine Jesus, a whole Jesus. He was crucified naked. His garments were removed from his body. He was hung on the cross with Sanja. A shameful death. Shameful death for a man like that. <laughs> what an end, according to our perspective. But it was a glorious end. Through that shame, through that pain, through all of those stripes, you now have a more glorious life. Please, this message is coming to you for you not to suffer under the oppressive hand of the devil. For you not to suffer under the oppressive thoughts of poverty. For you to look at your life from the perspective of true reality, not reality. The world wants to live reality. But sons of God are called upon to live true reality. Reality, you don't have money in your pocket. True reality, Apostle Paul said, we look poor, but we are making many rich. So who is richer? More blessed is he that giveth than he that taketh. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, Jesus said. He had no house. He didn't leave any boat in the sea. He didn't leave any cattle. He didn't leave any farm. He didn't leave any wife. He didn't leave any child. He didn't leave any money. All of the things that we count on that prosperity when we are on earth, Jesus left none. But he was a professional carpenter. He was a preacher. What is the status? What is the inclination of your heart towards God intervention in your life? You have to perceive his will. I pray in the name of Jesus. All throughout this time, I'm sharing the word of God with you on TV. I'm praying. I'm praying earnestly. I'm praying that God will change your perception of reality of life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you must know your advantage. You've been brought to the advantage. We are looking at Psalm chapter 22. And in that Psalm, Jesus speaks. I wanted us to go towards verse 22 of that Psalm chapter 22. All what Jesus was saying he said in verse 11, he said, Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. I told you about the psychology of suffering. Jesus knows that there is none to help in verse 14. He said, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. Jesus, Jesus wasn't feeling his bones again. You are seeing the reality of the crucifixion. So everything that happened on the cross is here in Psalm 22. So he said, for, he said, my strength is dried up like a pot shed and my tongue cleaved to my jaws. That's when he was thirsty before he asked for water. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. These were the prayers going on in the hearts of Jesus, which King David heard from the secret chambers of heaven. <laughs> so this is the reality of what was happening on the cross. Now we go to verse 22. After Jesus has expressed all these things, he now goes into...